Our whale swim adventure begins when we fly from Brisbane to the Kingdom of Tonga, where we meet up with a couple of other members of our tour group, Susan and Terry. We then board a smaller aircraft for a scenic flight over the stunning reefs to our destination, Hapai, in the heart of Tonga. Here, with our tour guide and marine biologist, Amanda Delaforce, we travel over the airport runway, then over the causeway, heading up to Sandy Beach Resort, where we'll be staying for a week. It's truly beautiful at Sandy Beach, with stunning views from our Fale, which sits just a few sandy steps from the azure blue ocean. The next morning, excited and maybe a little bit nervous, we meet at the Whale Swim meeting point and together head down the beautiful palm-lined path to the beach where we find our boat waiting. Here's Bella, one of our swim guides and Tyler's today's boat captain. It's not long before we see the whales making a splash and we're eager to get into the water. So we gear up and grab our cameras, waiting on the side of the boat for the all clear to slide in. As soon as we get in, we meet our first whale, a young sub-adult male, who Susan nicknames Bruno. Now, before the whale swim, we had a detailed briefing. And in that briefing, it was explained to us that we must at all times stay at least three meters from the whales. Bruno didn't get this memo and he was all up in our business, perhaps wanting to play? With our swim guide, Bella, calling out directions, Chris and I vigorously zigzagged this way and that, trying to put some distance between us and Bruno. However, we learned an important lesson that day. You simply can't outswim a humpback. So instead we aim for the boat, thinking that might keep him at a distance. But that didn't work and he came right over, swimming under us and past us as we clung to the side of the vessel. Right beside me, he spy hopped. Bruno seemed quite keen to keep a close eye on me as I tried to find the opportunity to climb back into the boat. After we were back on board, Bruno continued to hang around, seemingly wanting this marvelous interaction to continue. At one point, he was blowing big streams of bubbles as he swam around the boat. But eventually, Bruno gave us a wave, or a pectoral fin slap, and he was on his way. And after a thrilling first day, we were dog-tired and early to bed. The next morning, we were waiting and eager to get out and spend more time with the whales. This time, we met a relaxed mother and calf. The calf was curious and would come in to check us out before heading back to the safety of mum. We were very happy snorkelers as we observed these beautiful mammals. Mum started to do some pectoral fin slapping, which was great to see and hear from above and below. After a lovely visit, they took a fin dive and were on their way. And although we had cloudy skies, we were jazzed after our second day out. We gathered later for a very interesting presentation by Amanda and were treated to a cultural night with open oven roasted pig and wonderful entertainment by the local school students. <laughs> Over the next few days, we continued to have breathtaking experiences with majestic humpback whales. With Jack at the helm and Amy as our swim guide, we set off again. Often the humpbacks were traveling in a threesome, a mother calf and an escort. This escort had such similar markings to the mum, we assumed she was her daughter. Darren kindly gave us drone footage he took during one of our swims. You can see Chris with his yellow fins looking so small compared to these 40 ton baleen whales. The mother would often hang out on the bottom while the calf would venture near curious and playful. 
It was awesome and almost difficult to describe what it felt like to have these magnificent creatures so close, so present, looking you in the eye. My snorkel was almost falling out of my mouth because I couldn't stop smiling. The calf would always return to the safety of her mum, sometimes resting on the mother's rostrum or snout or swimming under her, beneath her pectoral fins. It was also entertaining to watch from the boat as the whales swam through and around the snorkelers who were trying to avoid them. In the deeper waters, we peered down to spy a mother and calf rising from below. But mum would continue to rest on the bottom quite often, not needing to breathe as much or as often as her calf, who would come up and explore. I learned to tell the difference between the male from female calves by the little golf ball sized bump on their lower tummy. Watching them rise from the depths through the shafts of light was a breathtaking experience. However, sometimes the spell would be broken if mom veered towards you, requiring us to spring into action and get out of her way. We are filled with gratitude to the whales, to our hosts, the guides, and the fabulous friends we made that we were able to experience this and be with these extraordinary mammals to see the tenderness of the mother and calf and the calf's exuberant curiosity, it's something we'll never forget. A big thanks to Amanda Delaforce for organizing this amazing trip, and also to our dear new friends, Susie and Terry. Go SEAL Team One! The trip wouldn't have been the same without you. So as the sun sets on our time in Tonga, we're sad to leave, but very grateful to have experienced this wonderful place, its people and the whales. Also, a heartfelt thanks to the owners of Sandy Beach Resort, Darren and Nina Rice, for sharing your special slice of heaven with us.